I think over the years, like one of the things you said is there's talent and like there's an ability to play and sing. Um, and that's the thing about being a worship leader is a lot of the time it comes down to your character and like your calling, but also your intimacy with Jesus. And I think if there was like any fail, you know, I, I can talk about a specific moment or thing, but in my mind, like the only fail is just showing up in routine without your heart and your character in the right place. Hey guys, welcome back to episode three of Origin Chats. Here on my comfy couch today, I've got Landon McLeod and Matt Reavy. And I'm going to talk to them about worship and their experience. So yeah, we've got some good stuff. You guys ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You nervous? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay, first question for both of you, I guess. Like, how did you start in worship, getting in worship? Did you feel a call? We're diving right in. We're diving right in. Did you feel called to be leading worship, or is it like um, you just like to worship and you want to see other people get there too? Or what's your? That's a big question, right? Want to? Yeah. yeah, come on. That's hard. I know. Okay, you want to start, Landon? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, Landon, she said you. So you're first. Um, I I feel like, I mean, there's like definitely a passion that I've always had to lead worship, and like it's it's definitely a God-given passion. I knew from like, it, maybe it sounds weird to say this or like, you know, feel this way, but I, I knew from a young age that I was going to be like on a stage leading at some capacity doing something. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know on what level, but I just knew like I was passionate about music. And I remember being a young boy, like looking at the people on the stage, just intrigued by what they're doing and like having a deep passion for, for worship and music. So yes, but not at, you know, didn't know what level or like at what place or time mm. like you probably like you've always wanted to be um in front of people like leading a group doing something but it could be any like who knows what it, yeah. if it, right now it's worship and you're really good at it. this Landon's my brother my younger brother if you didn't know it's my sister we got some just two years apart and it's been really fun on my end to see the transformation but anyway that's really cool so hmm mm. Matt be real let's be real okay yeah i i don't i think i ran from worship in itself because i i think that like the bridge between music and worship mm. was like something i didn't want to cross because i was more out up front i was more interested in music but i realized as i like kind of di like dived into that um that the things that i was chasing in music was more predominantly there in worship like in unity mm -hmm. like when my favorite I, I i learned early on that my favorite sound in the world is the sound of like probably about a thousand people singing the same thing together in unison That's good. like a big yeah. crowd it has to be a big crowd but like i get goosebumps every time um and um i think i chased music and chased that first and like the lord kind of just brought me home and showed me that like I'm more myself when I'm praising him and I'm not like trying to bring praise to myself because I think music like as, as a musician like bands and artists and stuff like that are like more self-centered um, and worship and leading worship is, is way more about bringing people into the presence of the father um, and uh, yeah I never really thought that I would be like a like a singer singer mm -hmm. you know i've mm. never considered myself that i've con considered myself like a musician first and that's what i was drawn to um but you asked how we got involved with worship i guess yeah that, yeah sure that too yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 youth groups okay it was always youth group wow. man like um when i was a kid you, when you're a kid you have so much passion and zeal mm -hmm. like for really like explicit things the things that are very like I love this, you know, and when kids like develop and grow and like fall in love with something, like I think it's our job as leaders to help them to pour into that, whether that's art, whether that, that's like friendships, whether that's people or like social yeah. kids, whether it's, you know, music or, or mm -hmm. whatever, like 
I, and I think that I, when I fell in love with music, I, I stepped into my youth group and um, I remember the guitarist was leaving and he made a big announcement and I walked up to the pastor and I was like, hey, like, you guys have a void. I play guitar. Can I just play guitar? And so I was that guitarist and we, dude, we like, we watched heaven fall. In wow. that group, dude. It was kind of insane. Like, yeah. Was that with, with Brad? That was church? before I went over to the church with the Brad. Church with Brad. Okay, cool. um, Dang. But, yeah. Okay, cool. So then you guys are like both super talented musicians and musically, and you were in, you're in a band. You've been in multiple like bands, and that's so cool because it's cool to have the gift. We talked about that, I think, the last episode with Brad and I, and it's cool to have a gift, super talented. Obviously, that's like so nice to hear uh, when you're like, it's nice to hear a nice sound, but to have not like a calling, but like to, to have your own intimacy with God and bring that out into a corporate place is something else. Like to be able to pastor the room, what has been your like biggest failures, I guess. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like what's been your biggest like fail, um, and your bet like so far that you've been like also whoa, I took a risk and I went for something and I, it actually was really good. Or like that was a flop, you know? And then that's my friend, I guess. Wait, I want to go. I mean, real, like, or maybe you just were like, I'm just not, we're just being really mechanical today and I don't feel anything with God. Or like, I don't know, maybe it's not recently, maybe it was in the past or maybe it is. <laughs> what was your biggest like risk you took and it was like, that was really good. Like, God, you were behind that. You pushed me to do that. Or just, I don't know, anything. You can go anywhere. Uh, I think go? There, there, there was, there are always new moments in worship. Yeah. And like, there are always, there's always something new happening. Um, and it's like countless. You can like, when you give yourself into worship and like, you let yourself go, like, God's always doing something. And it's like, almost like, mm -hmm it's so hard to remember everything mm -hmm. but like I remember one specific <laughs> moment I like I uh I had the pastor told me he's like I want you and it was in, in that youth group yeah. when I was like I was like 14 mm -hmm. and we were doing it was like when we were like how he loves us that song <laughs> yeah. it was like we would sing that every single oh, yeah. week I and, that. and like there's a version of that by Jesus culture that I was Kim Walker leads mm -hmm. it and he had told me, he's like, I want you to like speak something out in the middle of worship, right? And he was like, you should, you know, we'll do this song and then you, I want you to say something. And I was like, well, say something, what's that mean? You know what I mean? Like, and there's a part in that Jesus culture song you where did not. <laughs> Kim Walker goes like, yeah. Improv. You would know, like, it, it, like, yeah. that's she, like, that's what she His does. Love she like, is starts, just so... Like whatever yeah, in this room, and and you, if you've never experienced the love of God, you would know. I recited yeah. it <laughs> verbatim, almost like I had it really like. We all knew head. it. I mean, yeah. Knew that, yeah. Um, and that's what I pretty much recited. And I remember that just being so horrifyingly embarrassing <laughs> that I just I think I never like I stopped speaking from that point on. Like for a while, I was like, I will not talk because I'm just gonna recite. Something like it something. was something else. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that. That was embarrassing for sure. That's a good one. That's a good one. We all were. I, I know I was impacted by her words in that moment, oh. even the spontaneous. So impacted. And you just say it to yourself. It's like so nice. But then, yeah, that's funny. That's good. It's hard to replicate yeah, that or duplicate with someone. Oh. Like when God's on someone or yeah. something, it's like yeah. a counterfeit or it's just it's God's not on it. Yeah. It's a copy. And that's like a deep word for worship in general. It's yeah. like trying to copy someone or become them or replicate them. You know, it's great to take bits and pieces from experiences or learn from people. But yeah, it's like when God's on something or on a people, it's very specific and it's hard to replicate it if yeah. he's not telling you to. But Probably shouldn't. Yeah, what's, is that yours or what? No, I think like, I think over the years, like one of the things you said is there's talent and like there's an ability to play and sing um and that's the thing about being a worship leader is a lot of the time it comes down to your character and like your calling but also your intimacy with jesus mm. and i think if there was like any fail you know I, I can talk about a specific moment or thing but in my mind like 
the only fail is just showing up in routine without your heart and your character in the right place. I think over the years, like one of the things you said is there's talent and like there's an ability to play and sing. Um, and that's the thing about being a worship leader is a lot of the time it comes down to your character and like your calling, but also your intimacy with Jesus. Mm. And I think if there was like any fail, you know, I, I can talk about a specific moment or thing, but in my mind, like the only fail is just showing up in routine without your heart and your character in the right place. I think over the years, like one of the things you said is there's talent and like there's an ability to play and sing. Um, and that's the thing about being a worship leader is a lot of the time it comes down to your character and like your calling, but also your intimacy with Jesus. Mm. And I think if there was like any fail, you know, I, I can talk about a specific moment or thing, but in my mind, like the only fail is just showing up in routine without your heart and your character in the right place. Cause it's easy to show up and especially when there's talent and ability, um, you know, to, to sing well and play well. It's like, if God's not in that, it's just empty words. So good. And so I think it's, but it's tempting and it's, it's easy to do without even realizing it. Like just to show up week after week and find yourself in the kind of the, the routine or, um, just the habit of leading. But if you lose that intimacy with Jesus, it's, yeah, it's just kind of empty songs. And that's the only fail. Cause it's like, we step out yes. and even this weekend, I mean, we were singing something in the warehouse and I afterwards was thinking, I was like, man, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I would have, you know, not said those words. Those were so random. And there's little things, you know, when we were in a season of like risk taking and trying to write music. And so we'll sing things and try things in the middle of a set and it just totally falls on its face, but it's not failure. No. It's still, it's just like stepping out and taking a risk and, mm -hmm. and seeing what God does. But yeah, the main thing I would say is just like the times that I showed up and I wasn't truly pursuing the heart of Jesus, but I was just, you know, going through my own stuff and just showing up for, you know, my job that is or, so or something good, like that. Landon. So, yeah. Yeah. I, to piggyback on that, like I, I would, when I, my first thing I mentioned was when I spoke something and I, and I was like, oh, that flopped. But I would say there was more authenticity and a more worshipful heart in that than I was working full time, mm. leading work, leading like fast forward. Yeah. I, I started leading worship full time at a church every Sunday, going day in, day out, it was really, really difficult to remain authentic and sit inside of that, like, um, that holy place that you kind of end up in when you're worshiping mm. a lot. Yeah. If I wasn't chasing it midweek, it was yeah. just Sundays for mm. a long time. It kind of mm -hmm. like shifted into like, oh, I'm just clocking in, clocking in, clocking out. And um, what was the shift for you? When did that shift? When was it like, enough of just clocking in and clock like i need this yeah. to be real for me authentic it, is it, like, it took a long time wow, it was like good. a process yeah. um i think it's important to know when to step back mm. and receive oh. because worship leaders yeah. their job is to like usher other people with them to, to follow them. And if they're not going to that mm. place by themselves, mm. like you're leading them into a void. Like, yeah. and, and worship leaders need to be constantly seeking the father. And that doesn't mean musically all the time. Like yeah. your calling is, is deeper than your ability sometimes musically. Mm -hmm. um, and like, that's where practice comes in and bridges that gap, you know? But I think, it's yeah, I had nice. to, I had to step back like That's for a while, wild. like I, I did like and, and receive and worship and, um, yeah. So good. That's so good to be aware of that though. Like, you know, no. And like people around you to be like, Hey, yeah, step back, like chill, totally. rest. Yeah. It's okay. You don't have to carry the load. That's so healthy. Oh, so good. So what about like pastoring other people on your team? How like, or being um, surprisingly surprised by them pouring into you or like, 
hey, how are you feeling like on a Sunday morning or any time? Like, how has it been for you pastoring other people on your team? And then also, like, have you been surprised by, like, them pouring into you? Like, people I think of, like, Jemmy coming up and, like, just loving on you and you're like, don't expect it. Or, or in the practice times or I don't know, you know, anything like that. I think, like, um, I mean, just preface my response by saying, like, we are all – on our journey and like so so early in our journey of learning like Mm -hmm. as a church and and as a community and we're learning so much and we're growing so much and like we have goals and and like a vision to grow a lot more and develop more with with the team and everything so we definitely don't like claim to have all the answers but um i think we definitely are trying to be intentional to I mean, everything we're talking right now is like pursuing Jesus and the heart of Jesus. And so everyone we bring on the team, we want, and it's our goal for them to obviously embody that same heart and that same passion. And maybe this is common sense to me, but maybe it's not to some people. Um, It's easy to go out and like find talented musicians and find people that can play the part and, uh, and people that are great singers and great um, instrumentalists and all these things. But at the end of the day, if they don't, have a heart to lead people and, and love Jesus. And again, just like the, the character of being a worship leader and just showing up, you know, it's empty and there's nothing there, but there's something special and powerful when we all come together and like are unified and, and pursue that. And so kind of say that to say there was a season when we didn't have that many people, like there weren't, and there still aren't a ton, a huge pool of like incredible musicians to pull from. Um, yeah and that have that heart and so it's really tempting to just be like you know what this person is going through this or like they haven't been here in a long time but we're still gonna put them up just because we need someone and so that's the temptation and uh, I think what what we've been learning through the past few years is like you know what it's better sometimes to be like the only guy on stage with an acoustic guitar than have a team full of people that don't know Jesus and and that's kind of like a broad statement, but I think our intention is like, we just want to chase after the heart of, of God. And it's easy to go after all those people and all the things yeah. and the talent. But if the heart's not there, it's not yeah. quite worth it. I guess if you believe that God is abundant, I mean, from my point of view, and you know that he's going to provide and he has the right people for you. I mean, God brought you guys to brought like the church here. Like, can we trust him to bring the right people at the right time to come up? Mm. Instead of just here, you're, you'll fit. Here, you're fine. You can you can do this. But like, in out of a place of peace and out of a place of like not anxiousness, maybe mm-hmm. being able to be like, you know, God, like I don't know, how do they find that balance? That's hard. That's that's a hard thing. I, I've I've had a hard time um, with the people that go to talent first. Mm-hmm. Like, and I wanted to be, like, the person, since day one, I'm like, I want to go to the heart first. I want to go to my own heart first, get my own heart right, and then go to my talent next. Um, I think time and time again, like, like, I was so overwhelmed with the, like, humility of the people that were around me that were, like, coming alongside me to, like, do what it is that we you know, we're going to do, we're going to like lead others into worship and we're yeah. going to lead people into, into a place of worship. Um, dude with Brad, um, I was the, I was his youth worship leader, mm-hmm. um, back in the day. And, um, I just remember the passion that our team had this kid, Brandon, like I, he just comes to mind. Uh, he was our drummer and he was like, like always sending me songs, like always like confessing with me and talking with me and like working with me. I remember there was times that he was like, I, there was one time he was like, I can't go on stage. And I was just like, wow, like wow. you hold this so high, like you so, hold this so well. And, and I remember in that moment telling him, I'm like, like the Lord doesn't want you to step like down from a position that he's called you into. Wow. And, and like, it was a, an amazing time of opportunity for, for us to be like, Hey, like God's, in, God's in this. That's and, cool. and God's behind this and um but but yeah like we all have have opportunities of leadership with each other um and I feel like that's that's how it is in a true family like Mm -hmm. 
you know, like sometimes you lean into what mom says, sometimes you lean into what dad says, you're listening to mom, you're listening to dad, you're listening to your brother, your sister and stuff. And Mm -hmm. I think Landon and I being together in this has been kind of something special that I've been able to experience because um, for a long time I was just like the worship leader and you kind of look at like the worship leader and you think, oh, they've just got like this this yeah. thing in their pocket mm-hmm. that no one else has. And I think that like with Landon and I, like I've been able to step back and watch God move through him. And like, I've noticed like where times where he would step back and like watch God doing, doing stuff through me um, as, and, and then other times where we're both able to step back and let God move through Jemmy or Evie or, yeah. you know, whoever else is singing with us and, yeah. and leading with us. And, and um, yeah. Leadership so is not just vocally, you know, yes, like leadership is also like, yes. like in posture, dude. Yeah. Albert is, a, is one yeah. of the most amazing worship leaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I've mm-hmm. seen, mm-hmm. he leads people by his own presence of yes. being okay. like, he's worshiping so hard that it like is like radiating from him. And that's mm-hmm. how. From day one, let's talk about Albert. From day one that he came here, I remember like he front row ready just hungry all through the like time up the park all the time like every practice that we had that he wasn't even on stage like doing the piano or singing or anything it was like i'm there to just be here i just want to be here and like letting out worship in that way because it's not just being on a stage and um and it's like just always there just consistent this is consistent like and like yeah that's good that's good family Mm having a space that we like trust one another Mm -hmm. and that we can back off and like recognize what God's doing. Um, I think on each person is really cool. Or even if we don't recognize what God's doing, we still recognize that that person's stepping out. And so it's like, okay, let's see that and let's just let it go. And, and it's not like, yeah, it's not like an us show. It's not a me show or a them show. It's, it's about chasing and worshiping Jesus. So it's fun. It's cool to see that and collaborate on that. I've seen personally, you guys step out so many times, just, vulnerably if it's like either with the youth when we have had worship with the youth or in front of the church in the Goodyear building or here now or wherever at the park like stripped totally back and like doing some reggae time just just taking like fun risks of like but it's something really important because it involves the whole community the whole the whole family the whole community of two trees like just to loosen up or like mm-hmm. worship the king of kings and not be so like in their head about it. Yeah. And you guys have taken risks and like stopping. Like, Matt, like you stop to just hey, hey let's, let's just say something real quick. Let me talk about something. Mm-hmm. Or hey, I feel this going on in the room. Or like you're really good at like taking a moment or being real. Hey, this is what's going on in me. Mm-hmm. And it shifts things in the room. It's so cool. And like Landon just like, you know, we're going to sit here longer. We're going to yeah. do this longer. We're going to get awkward maybe. Like, mm-hmm. And pressing through, it's like, so nice. Yeah. So nice. I, it's so cool too, like, cause I have to honor Brad in this moment too, because it's really, really hard to, I like find, find like leadership that's willing to say, I don't care what it is as long as it's yeah. the spirit. Yeah. As long as it is Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. like we will chase it, whatever so it is. And I hate reggae music, like, I hate, you know, but like the spirit was there. And so we're like, let's chase this. And Mm -hmm. and, like, Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not so, I'm not so well spoken that I think that anybody needs to hear me speak anything. But in those moments, I'm like, I could just got to be honest. Cause like, that's what the spirit's doing. So good though. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and sometimes I miss it. Sometimes like I'm, I go off on a tangent and everybody's like, well, Okay, like let's get back to it and stuff and I don't know I I think that it's important to be willing enough to go to that place that you're like I don't know what I'm doing mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm saying I don't know where we're going but we're going somewhere yeah. and like the truth of an organism is that like if it's growing it's alive that's Sweet. like that's your telltale sign that you can see that an organism is is alive so is that good. it's growing that's good. and yeah. growth doesn't happen when you're so afraid to move mm. you know what i mean um when you're sitting in a free space a freedom like freedom you yeah. can you have freedom and and grace to mess up mm-hmm. but that's how you grow is like yeah. you you just try things mm-hmm. and you do things and you get like willing enough to 
to mess up and and if you're not you won't move yeah mm. and it's family literally mm. like we're all here to worship learn like meet god and worship him so like doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. No. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, um, what is your? This is, I guess, to, like wrapping it up. But um, what's your vision for not like the church of two trees? What's your vision though for worship in the world, for worship in our community, um, or what is like God pressing on your heart to see worship look like? Like it's not. We all know worship just is not just music. It is your life. It is a lifestyle. It is walking with Jesus daily, like mopping the floor for him. That is worship. This is just a song moment. You get to lead us in singing. So, but I don't know, like, what do you, what does God put on your heart? They're like, I don't know, is that, you get, you know what I mean? Like, what is worship, what's your vision for it? Um, I guess if we talk about singing, is it look like that's the stage? Does it look like it sounds, does it sound different? Like, what is God, what do you vi- have your vision for, I guess, the bigger world and worship even? Yeah. It could be whatever. What do you feel like is a vision that God's put in your heart for this community, the, the California, or just the worship community? Mm-hmm. I think like, I think um, just s- staying close to um, the heart of God in worship. I think ah. that's kind of a, another broad statement, but it's, it's easy in our culture or maybe in any culture, people feel this maybe growing up in their whole life, but I think just staying close to what God's saying and, and, and following like what God, what is he, God, what are you doing? God, what are you saying? God, where are you? Where are you in all this? I think it's easy to kind of lose um, like sight of where mm-hmm. God is and, uh, and it's easy for us to do our own thing in our own worship and write our own songs and all this stuff. But if we're not like just staying close to the heart of God and, and where he is and what he's saying, you know, it's easy to kind of find ourselves further away. But I think for us, like the long-term vision is just be authentic worshipers of Jesus and to be able to lead our church into a place of just genuinely knowing the heart of God. And it's kind of cool that we started talking about how he loves us and the Jesus culture movement. It's mm. still going on, you know, even now, but back then around, you know, 2008 or nine or 10 or whenever it was that that album came out, it was the first time for me that I like tangibly felt like the presence of God in a worship song that like actually brought me um, just to a place of like complete surrender. Like my heart was just completely sold out and surrendered to God. Yeah. And it was like a tangible feeling. Like the Holy Spirit was just, was just touching my heart. And, mm-hmm. and I think that was an intentional thing when they're writing and, and, you know, their culture maybe was developing an intentional, intentional thing. But hopefully as we, you know, continue to sing and lead yeah, and I know that we want to write songs and we want to lead people and we want to write albums and all these things, but like the heart of it and, and yeah. the main focus isn't to write songs and to sell albums, but it would just be to like actually ignite um, that maybe, I don't know, America and ignite California, ignite um, our city to actually see a glimpse of heaven like so good. in our church and but it's all the heart it's kind of what I keep saying but like the heart of worship the heart of worship it just comes back to the heart like mm-hmm. the heart of what we're doing and, and as long as we're following the heart of God and like pursuing that that's success to me and that's kind of like vision for me it's like God where are you where are you going where are you leading us what are you doing what are you saying because that's all that really matters we just want to hear you and follow you mm-hmm. but I don't want to go unless you're going before us mm-hmm. right yeah oh it's just so easy to run ahead and like make plans and do our own things. And, and God is in our plans. And I think he gives us, you know, our own desires and they're from him. Mm -hmm. And so it's good for us to have our own thoughts and desires, but like just to partner with Holy spirit, like what are you saying? What are you doing? So, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Landon says it well. Um, Mm -hmm. I think in short, like authenticity in worship, Personally, I want I want to be. I want to um, take care of what God's given me well, mm. um, and He's been in our church, and He's led me to come to Ventura and be here with these people, and so I want to be with them and um, 
encounter the Holy Spirit together, mm-hmm. and whatever that Im- impacts beyond is is in His hands. And but yeah, I think authenticity is is like in singular, like in one yeah. word. Mm-hmm. I just want to be real and honest, and what I do experience, I want to be Him, and I don't want to. Um, try to curate something so try to try to make something that looks good to the world make something that's like pleasing um just the story of marrying worshiping jesus feet like has been just weighing on my heart more now than ever i think and i think what specifically like stood out to me recently in that story was like the cost of what that worship was not just in the physical like oil that she poured out yeah. on his feet but in like the social world that was around her people were like confused mm-hmm. and people were like do you want uh-huh. her? like whatever and and i think that the way that we equate powerful things nowadays is so the antithesis of what that worship was like if god's spirit is on this then this would blow up online whoa yeah if mm-hmm. god's spirit was on this then we would have thousands of people at our church Mm. and I think that those are really easy to fall into like those things are those lie those lies are very easy to believe because they can also be true do you know what I mean like like of course where the spirit of the Lord is like people are going to be attracted to that of course like but the numbers aren't but like no the authenticity like is it like I want to lead my family well yeah you know, if I am a worship leader, That's it. I want to do a good job at leading them to Jesus because I can't bring them anything. That's so good. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I can't yeah. heal anybody yeah. of addiction. It's I can't him. heal uh, anybody of, yeah. of a broken family, like or 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 like bring them joy in 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 the time of sorrow. Like I can make people laugh or make people happy and talk to them and listen, but like the spirit of God like changes That's so good. people and yeah changes circumstances and like i think that's really really what i'm after Nothing mm-hmm, else can do it. Mm-hmm. that's so good you guys well okay said. last fun question i guess mm-hmm. kind of fun what is a song right now for you guys specifically in your life in your personal life that you're like chewing on like you just can't mm-hmm. move away from it um that it's just like god is encountering you in. It doesn't have to be in the church like corporate just in your private life like what has been a gold nugget for you that you're just yeah, the, um, there's or a psalm even if it's a psalm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to two albums. Okay, so okay. So you asked me for a song. Yeah. I'm gonna give you like two. All right, albums. you got to. You're a musician. Um, but they're both by a band called Loud Harp. Um, <laughs> oh, they're my, <laughs> yeah. they're my, they're my jam. Um, I think I think oh, the so uh, one of the albums is called Hope, where there was. Nothing. Yes. Um, they are singing straight up it. out of the Psalms. Yeah, is that the Psalm one? There's a Psalm. <sighs> Yeah, so Hope Where There Was None, that came out in 2017. Yes. They're such a small little band, they are so and they're not good. like corporate worship songs, which is fine. Like, yes. I don't care about that, but um, they're very scripturally sound songs, mm-hmm. and ASAP yes. was um, actually every song has a number at the beginning of it. It's the inspiration of the, the psalm that it's written after. And just I both of those albums. When I want to sit in his presence, I, I go to those songs. It's and, literally this um, the the word. Um, they actually did a, a song, um, I like it was like a YouTube performance, but it was like like about social justice and stuff like that. Wow. They're very involved, and, mm-hmm. and but um, the, I think that those guys are chasing Jesus well and listening to scripture and and like outpouring that into song. Yeah, um, very creative. Really well. Very I mean, very yeah, creative. Super inspiring. Yeah. Um, but um. Yeah, the, those I recommend those albums. Loud Harp. Yeah, Loud Harp. Yeah, they're I my gosh, I'm so glad you said them. <laughs> they're cool, yeah. so good. Yeah, they're insane. Yeah, they got me through my time in Mexico. Like, oh really? Yeah, I just like, oh yes, they're so good. That's awesome. Landon. Um, I've always I've really always loved a lot of the stuff that Bethel has been putting out, but they put out an album, the Homecoming album. Yeah. Is that the album that came out recently so. that? I've really been encouraged by and it's I I tend to like more of like the singer songwriter like intimate kind of stripped down acoustic stuff like that Corey Asbury will do 
Um, and this is like the opposite of that. It's like full band, just big old production, but I don't know, just the passion in, in their music is really cool. Mm. Um, but I, I don't know, I, I've been listening to their stuff a lot and in the past like year or so, like Chris Renzema has put out incredible music. And mm -hmm. if you guys don't know Chris Renzema, he's awesome and kind of more that singer songwriter, folk indie Christian yeah. music. And it's just, just like, I feel like that kind of music carries the heart really well of, of God. And they're singing from like a deep place and I love that. So yeah, the soaking music's good too. Worship. Yeah. So good guys. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for opening up. Is there anything else you want to like spit out there? <laughs> Put, let out. Thanks for having us. And yeah. I think, I think just continuing to sit and like share, you know, I think it's easy to be in our positions, all of us on the couch here and think like people already know this stuff or they see it or of course they know that. And, and it's easy to feel that way without us even sharing some of the story. But a lot of the simple stuff, people maybe weren't there for that yeah. part of the journey or they're not involved in a musical way with our church and they don't have any idea of what we're talking about. And so it is kind of cool to share that. But um, mm -hmm. I'm just so encouraged by where our church is now and, and the culture that's been built and the people that have come, that have come and gone different directions for different reasons. But it is such an encouraging time to be a part of this church and, mm -hmm. and anyone that's watching, I just, you know, I'm so grateful for the people that have chosen to call this church family and that have chosen to show up every single week and, and just grow in worship sure, and yeah. in, you know, community. And it is a completely different church. You know, I think Matt can agree than it was that it was four years ago and mm -hmm. even beyond that. And so it's, it's so encouraging to see just, the passion that our church has and the heart that people have just to really go after um, Jesus with everything that they have. And I'm excited to look back, hopefully at this conversation in a few years yeah. and just laugh Hopefully. because we're on a whole another, yeah. you know, God willing, a whole, a whole different place. So, yeah. Yeah. What was I going to say? I was going to say something. Oh, I, this is just the truth of it is that, is that our heart for the father is way, it, it eclipses our, our heart for production like tenfold you know mm -hmm. amen i could care less if we're doing these okay. rock songs forever if 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 music becomes like you know it steps back and worship looks some, like something different that's I what i'm care. like asking yeah like i, yeah. I don't care yeah. i want to step into whatever it whatever. is that he has and like i as a young kid and i'm and i'm getting older but like as when when I was really young. I was like, all oh, these stuffy old people, like they don't like the new worship. They don't mm -hmm. like the new songs. Like they don't like the bands and stuff. Like, and like, Let's trip it back though. And I and I was so like, oh, you guys are all you don't know. You know, my mom was a was an organist at a like uh, my dad's oh my church. Gosh. My dad was a pastor, and so I like grew up in that and yeah. very liturgical church services. And I found Jesus like in this court like contemporary rock worship setting mm -hmm. and I've gotten a little older and I suppose a little wiser but like the truth of it is that it is that I could not let go of that like sooner and yeah. like I want and, and that, that like kind of goes into our church too it's like and I like I know that Brad's heart is for Jesus first as well mm -hmm. and we're not trying to build something that is impressive to the world like yeah. we're trying to build something that blesses Jesus yeah um so good. and like that's where I look I, I can't wait to look back in like two years and be like wow I can't believe like, yeah what's come from this um and where we are now and, and whatever. So excited. yeah yeah, it's so good. Stripped yeah. back I feel like all those old songs are coming back the old hymns yeah. it's just like who knows what it's going to look like? Who knows? Mm -hmm. And I hope everything, all the ideas that we think are supposed to happen, just get wrecked. Mm -hmm. Just get wrecked. Jesus would just, I just want to say this, speak it out. Like watching this all right now, whoever's watching this one day. Um, yeah, they would be wrecked in a, with his love and any wall that's put up um, or idea like, this is the expectation. Or this is what I have to see happen. This is how it's supposed to be. That it would just be like, pfft, like blown apart. <laughs> that like, if you think you know it all, you don't. You don't. <laughs> and the other, we don't know it. Yeah, we don't we know. know. We don't have the answers. And we just, yeah. that we would just be hungry to just be with him. Just to be with him and wait. I remember uh, my pastor in Reading, um, Richard Gordon, he was pressing in. 
And it was, he was just pressing in. He was telling the story, pressing in, pressing in, alone in his room. And he had, I think he had a guitar, and he was just like singing the Psalms or something, singing some verses. And he's like, God, I need to know you. I need to feel, I need to know you, encounter you. And there was nothing. It was nothing, nothing. Every day, more and more and more, pressing in. Nothing, nothing happened. There was nothing that he felt or anything he saw. Day after day, I don't remember how many days went by, and then it was just like all of a sudden, something shifted and it was like a little drop a little drop of water just a drop and then all of a sudden it was a flood mm -hmm. like a flood in the spirit just like something shifted and it's just like that consistency and pressing in in worship whether it's music or in your life just just be consistent and press in and so I hope like God is going to do that in our body just keep pressing in mm -hmm. and being bold and letting out what you gotta let out and yeah. freedom it takes Freedom. time to tune your heart, yeah. right? Like it takes time to tune, sorry, just hit the mic, tune like <laughs> your own heart into what God yeah. is speaking. And a lot, of a lot of people will equate their own inability to hear the Father to the Father's yes. consistency or wow. like his persistence with us. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you got it backwards. Yeah. Dude. Like you got to spend some time yeah. and like chase him yeah. and teach yourself. To he'll meet him. you. So good. Thank you guys for joining me on the couch Thanks. today. Super stoked for next time. So tune in to our chats. Whoop, whoop. See you guys. The cozy couch. The cozy couch. <laughs> whoop, whoop.